morning, everyone. How are you doing? Um, so I'm Ben, and today we're going to talk about the ultimate cloud platform team topology, if that's not enough of a mouthful. Um, we're going to be looking at how modern cloud changes the way we want to build uh, two fundamental aspects about how we change, how we deal with infrastructure and security topics when it comes to our structuring of teams around cloud, and then some tools and code that can help us in doing that in an example in CDK, but other approaches uh, we'll talk about too. As I mentioned, my name's Ben. I'm the CTO and founder of Alios, which is a consultancy, but don't hold that against me. Um, and I help a lot of organizations to move to adopt modern cloud. So this can be airlines moving from fully on-premise to fully serverless on AWS, through to startups that have sort of succeeded in product market fit, and then looking to, or are struggling to scale that approach. I'm also the editor of the Serverless Transformation blog, where we share a lot of the lessons we're learning, working with customers on modern cloud. And I'm an AWS serverless hero, so I also work with AWS on their product backlog for event-driven architectures and serverless. Now, today, we're going to look at what is this modern cloud I keep talking about. I'm not so focused on the label. We'll talk a little bit about it. But the main part of the talk will be how the shift to modern cloud and the way we work with cloud resources changes the way we need to structure our teams and our platform topology to work with it. We're going to look at why it's hard to scale in a new cloud environment, scaling our teams, not scaling our infrastructure. And we're going to look at team topologies briefly as part of the solution, and then CDK as an example of a tool that can help us shift to more of a platform as a product. We'll also look at some conclusions at the end on bringing that all together as an end-to-end -end journey. But what is the modern cloud I keep talking about, which I put here as cloud-native serverless-first utopia, which is quite a lot of buzzwords. Really, I'm talking about moving towards more modern cloud approaches. I'm not so focused on the label of what we're calling modern cloud, but the shift towards things like serverless on AWS that move application code and, in and infrastructure code closer together and shift to make the core building blocks of our applications, be it compute, be it storage, to be consumed more as a utility or a commodity. And I'm sure Simon Wardley in his talk later will talk more about those words in more detail, but really shifting how we approach the building blocks of our applications and how that changes the team structure underneath. Now, organizations and large enterprises that are traditionally more, well, traditional in their application architectures are moving to more modern cloud, things like serverless on AWS. And often they're doing this to reduce total cost of ownership or decrease time to value. That is the time from an idea in an organization to customer feedback in production. But this talk isn't about what is modern cloud and is it serverless or is it another word or is it another technology? If you're interested in how organizations are looking to adopt modern cloud, I suggest David Anderson's book, The Value Flywheel Effect. It's not just because David buys me a pint whenever I put his, slide in, his book in my slides, but it's because it contains some really great case studies on organizations and enterprises moving to modern cloud and uses Wardley mapping to map out the direction they want to move in. But as you all probably know and have all probably experienced, moving to more modern cloud approaches, things like serverless, it's not a single step, and it's not that easy. It's not just build it and they will come, as I often tell organizations moving the field of dreams trap. It's not just giving a new shiny system with nice landing zones and expecting things to work faster. It's a lot of steps that need to be taken. And today, we're going to focus on how we change our platform teams to make this effective. So modern cloud, moving to things like serverless, is supposed to make things easier. Things are commodities, things are utilities. But why is it hard to scale our cloud teams? If we take a step back, we want our cloud teams to be secure, fast, stable, reactive, autonomous, depending on your industry, happy. We want them to feel productive and work well. But actually, the move to modern cloud, although it's made some things easier, it's made other things harder. And there are two key areas I want to talk about that we want to rethink. This is the top-down approach to security and infrastructure, and it's also the cognitive load that we're putting on teams. <clears throat> When we think about an organization that maybe has a more traditional architecture, maybe on-prem, moving to more modern cloud, something like serverless on AWS, they probably have quite a centralized top-down approach to topics like security and infrastructure more generally. This is often seen in support tickets to get new servers, in change approval boards to get things out, and in kicking back development work quite late in the process. This not only slows things down and creates friction, but it also creates a bit of an us versus them a relationship between what we typically call a traditional infra team and an application team. And obviously, people have tried to make DevOps teams, and people have tried to change this. But as we move to more modern cloud, the application teams are working much closer with the infrastructure code. And this is bringing the friction even closer together. 
So we need a way to change this up. We need a way for security and other infrastructure related topics to actually be a bottom up approach. Of course, there are still some top down guardrails that actually we need to enable these development teams that we're utilizing with modern cloud to be able to be effective and get the return on investment that we see. This isn't my best slide in the world, but the cognitive load on teams is really high. Often, we're seeing teams dealing with lots of topics. Of course, modern cloud and moving to more of a commodity um, or utility when it comes to computer storage makes things easier to build applications at scale. It's never been easier to build applications at scale. But teams look very different now. We often have one full stack engineer trying to do many things, deal with many topics. In the past, we would have a, a database expert, a networking expert, a security expert, whereas now we often have a full stack developer with a bit of a backlog and a dream trying to do all these things at once. And it's a lot of pressure, it's a lot of stress, and it's a lot of things to keep up to date with. So how can we change to change that approach from being top down whilst also reducing the amount of topics those teams have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis? Now, organizations moving to adopt more modern cloud technologies also are doing this often to reduce cognitive load by breaking monolithic systems apart. So yes, this is partly how do we change security and infrastructure topics to be enabling. It's often happening at the same time of breaking systems down and separating teams out and reducing cognitive load. And this is where team structure comes in. And we are going to talk about team structure here, but we're not going to focus on what we're going to see later as the stream aligned teams. We're going to focus on the changes we need to our platform teams. Who here is familiar with Conway's Law? If you raise your hands. It's been in some of the talks, so it's a bit easier. Quite a lot of you. And it's really the, the rule that if we have an organizational structure, that organizational structure is going to be seen in the system that we build. Now, for those of you who've read Mac Matthew Skelton's work, you might know what this slide is trying to indicate. For those of you who haven't, you've not had too much coffee, this slide is just in reverse. And it's representing the reverse Conway maneuver. This is, OK, we know the application architecture that we want. Let's organize our team structures so that we get that resulting application architecture. Now, sadly, Matthew Skelton doesn't yet buy me a pint when I put his book in my slides, but he is sort of required reading for any organization I work with when they're looking to modernize their cloud approach, because it gives a shared language of team types and interaction modes. In the book, it talks about streamlined teams, enabling teams, complex subsystem teams, and platform teams, and the different interaction modes there are between those teams. And while it's important to break up our architecture and have our different streamlined teams working on the different features, today we're just focusing on the platform team and how we make that platform team work as a product to those streamlined teams. And how this is key in a modern cloud environment. Now, I've talked a lot and we've had lots of boxes on the slides. Let's get to some actual code and talk about how this looks like in practice. And CDK is one example of a tool that can help us to change our platform team to work more as a product when it comes to a cloud environment. CDK, raise your hand who's used CDK. Cool, about a quarter of the room. CDK is, uh, it enables you to write infrastructure as code, really as code in a programming language you're familiar with, be that TypeScript, Python, Java, really anything. And this brings in programming concepts that are super useful when we want to shift the interaction mode between our platform or infrastructure team and the stream aligned teams. It brings in abstraction, encapsulation, and composition, for instance, if we go than a TypeScript approach. This means that a platform team can hide complexity, can provide sensible defaults, and can also protect dangerous settings like making S3 buckets public in AWS. The streamlined team can then compose those together through composition to build use case specific um, constructs that build out the features they're trying to build. Out of the box, CDK gives sort of three levels of constructs level one, level two, and creatively named level three. Level one is directly generated from CloudFormation. So CloudFormation is sort of the infrastructure's code under the hood of AWS. And we can generate automatically the level one constructs from this. So this doesn't do anything clever. It's CFM buckets, CloudFormation buckets. You're giving a bucket name, and it's just generating an S3 bucket. It's not doing anything smart. Level two is curated. You see here, these are coming from AWS. This example is in TypeScript, but it works in Python. It works in lots of languages. And here, there are some defaults being put in by the cloud provider. There are some best practices and policies being put in, but not a lot. And you see here, the difference is S3 CFN bucket, and this is just S3 buckets. And then the last level, level three, is more, uh, more popular, actually, online. You're seeing lots of examples coming out. And this is because these are use case patterns. Here, we have a, 
a spec rest API construct, which takes an open API spec and generates an API. It does the API gateway, it does the Lambda functions, it does the interaction between the two, and it does a lot of the heavy lifting, and it hides that complexity from the user. But that's too high level. We said that we want our platform to be, team to be as a product to our stream align team. We wanted to give building blocks that bake in best practices and enable those teams to succeed. But this is too high level, and this is where the concept of L2 plus constructs comes in. This is taking a level two construct and adding more company specific best practices. Here we have platform buckets. If we're an airline, we could call it airline buckets. If we were a chicken shop, we could call it, well, chicken bucket might not be the best name, but we can, we can put our company specific name into the construct, but we can also put our company specific policies, maybe blocking public access, maybe some specific encryption that our company wants to roll out across all storage, and maybe standard access control lists. But this complexity is hidden from the stream align team or the feature team. They don't have to deal with the complexity of the encryption standard on the buckets. Of course, it's code. They can dig in. They can see if they want to. But it's abstracted away for the most part. And we can also protect things like mapping a bucket public. With my platform teams that I roll out in organizations, buckets, I make dangerous public bucket the only construct where you can actually make a bucket public. And weirdly enough, people don't tend to use it so much. So if we go back to our team structure, we've got a platform team, which is enabling our stream aligned teams, and our stream aligned teams working on different parts of the domain, maybe payments, maybe bookings, and then pushing out constructs from the platform team that are composed by the stream aligned team for different use cases. Now, we're using a modern programming language like TypeScript, so we can publish these as versioned packages on NPM or another packaging system, and they can be consumed by the stream aligned teams. But this is as a product. We can release new versions. We can have semantic versioning. We can get feedback from the streamlined teams. And you can adopt an inner source model where those teams can see the application code and request, pull, uh, request changes. But we are having the ownership being by the platform team. So CDK here has enabled a bottom-up approach. We're not telling development teams, no, you can't release this, way down the production of that. We're not taking them to change approval boards. We're from the start, giving them constructs, building blocks that enable them to build in the way that we want them to build and support them by reducing the cognitive load of all the complexity that takes place in building modern cloud applications. Of course, probably a lot of you realize this doesn't solve everything. You still need some top-down approaches. You still need service control policies, permission boundaries in AWS control tower. You still need top-down guardrails, top-down safety nets. But this helps to enable teams to move faster. It also changes the relationship between the teams. The streamlined teams are working with security, working with infrastructure to build better applications. And yes, there are some top-down controls and policies in place, but the relationship between the teams changes. They feel enabled, and there is a constructive relationship between the two teams. They move faster, and less things are getting kicked back late in the feedback loop. Now, CDK was just one example of a tool. The main message is that a shift to modern cloud approaches like serverless on AWS. They have made things like storage and compute more of a commodity, more of a utility. But we now have a team of very leveraged individuals trying to do lots of things, trying to deal with lots of topics. The traditional approach of that sort of top-down security and infrastructure, demanding things from teams, pushing things back, putting them through change approval processes has to change because it's creating too much friction. CDK enables us to move to that platform as a product, to have the platform team building something that's leveraged and used by those stream aligned teams. We do this through encapsulation, abstraction, and composition, and we can bake in best practices and build a set of building blocks for that organization. Now, structuring the teams requires change. This is often done as a larger thing to break down monolithic systems. But here, we're focusing on how the platform team interacts with those stream aligned teams afterwards. Again, CDK is just one example. There are other ways to do it. And still, we do need top-down guardrails. But it's a fundamental change in seeing these infrastructure and security topics as a product, and that the consumers of that product being the stream aligned team. So CDK, just one example. But the fundamental change is the interaction mode between the teams. <laughs> 